Hey everyone, welcome back. And today's video, I've got another real life case study to share with you. We're gonna dive into the financial plan of a couple in their early 50s who wanna to put together a plan for an early retirement in the next eight to 10 years. And they've done an excellent job when it comes to saving so far, and they have just shy of a million dollars. And for those of you that are new here and are wondering who I am and why I'm talking about this, my name is Matt. I'm a certified financial planner and advisor over at One Degree Advisors. And I help individuals and families who are generally in their 40s, 50s, or early 60s who have over a million dollars saved design a plan to make work optional. And for some people, we make a plan for them to stop working altogether. For others, that might look like switching to part-time work, a less stressful job, or maybe starting that next chapter of something they've always dreamed of doing like volunteering or ministry. And I'm excited to continue sharing these case studies with you. And my goal and my hope is that viewing these can help give you a little bit of confidence in your own decision making. So again, in this video, we are gonna take a look at this couple's financial plan and I'll walk through the options and tweaks that we pulled today to help them move towards early retirement in the near future. So feel free to steal these strategies and hopefully this will give you some inspiration for your own situation. Now let's delve into the details of their plan. Meet Jerry and Amy Seinfeld, and I've altered their names and tweaked some of the specific numbers for privacy reasons, of course, but let's get into the nitty gritty of their financial situation. Okay, so first things first, Jerry is 50 years old and Amy is 47, and both of them are currently working full time. They've saved approximately $960,000, comprising of $20,000 in cash, $550,000 in Jerry's rollover IRA, $200,000 in Amy's rollover IRA, and around $120,000 combined in their current employer accounts, which are essentially a mix of, of 403Bs and defined contribution plans. Additionally, they also have a defined benefit plan, essentially a, a pension account valued about $70,000. And when they retire, they'll have that option to choose between taking a lump sum or opting for that fixed uh, pension options for the rest of their lives. And these numbers are also excluding their home, which is valued around $800,000. Also, their home carries a mortgage of around $450,000, as well as a $60,000 home equity loan. And like many lucky people out there, they managed to refinance their mortgage just a few years ago, securing one of those rock bottom interest rates. So if that's you heading in retirement, you should definitely be patting yourself on a back right now. Good for you. Alrighty, when it comes to retirement income, they will have social security benefits totaling around $29,000 for Jerry and $28,000 for Amy. And later in the video, we're actually gonna discuss our strategy for when and why they should claim these benefits, especially considering their plan for early retirement. And additionally, as I mentioned earlier, they also have that pension option through their employer. As they approach retirement, we are gonna to wanna to run through a comprehensive analysis to ensure we've select the right option that will ultimately maximize their lifetime income. And what that means is running the numbers and deciding hey, what rate of return do we need uh, if they were to opt for the custom investment portfolio as opposed to receiving that guaranteed lifetime income, which does not include a cost of living adjustment. So inflation is gonna be a big factor for that one. Now let's dive into the specifics of their saving strategy. When it comes to investing, there are generally three avenues or three ways we can really invest money from a tax standpoint. There's tax deferral, tax-free, and taxable. Now tax deferral involves deferring taxes now and dealing with that tax bill in the future. And the types of accounts that fall into this category for them where their IRAs, their 403Bs, and defined contribution and benefit plans. The second bucket is the tax-free bucket. Think of this as your Roth options, like Roth IRAs, Roth 403Bs, Roth 401Ks. This is money in which you've already paid taxes on, and it will now grow tax-free in these accounts if you hold onto it for the long term. So when retirement comes down the road, you can now pull from these accounts for income tax-free. And lastly, there's the taxable account, essentially your brokerage account where you pay the taxes 
kind of as you go. In this bucket, you put money from your net paycheck or directly from your bank account into this account and invest it. And you're subject to those capital gains rates each year as the account generates interests or dividends or capital gains. The good thing about this account, those rates are generally much lower than your ordinary income rates. And you can invest that money in a very tax efficient way. Now, looking at these three buckets, our goal is to stuff these counts with pretty much as much as we can in savings before we reach retirement. However, we need to be strategic about what bucket to use. For their plan, we want to start thinking about shifting some of their savings around in this last bucket right here, which is the taxable bucket. Now, wh why would we do that? Well, there's gonna be a gap in time before they reach the age where they can start withdrawing money from their retirement account without incurring that 10% that early withdrawal penalty. You need to be over the age of 59 and a half to access these funds if you're still working part-time. So what we decided to do was create that taxable account and plan to start redirecting some of their 403B contributions to this account. That way we can successfully create a bucket of money to supplement their income during those gap years before age 59 and a half. Yes, they lose that pre-tax deduction now, but they get a lot more flexibility in the future without that 10% penalty for retiring early. Now, if they decide to retire in 10 years, this strategy really isn't as needed because there is no penalty if you're over that qualified age. For, for them, they really like the idea of having more flexibility using a taxable account for their plan. And you're gonna see exactly how this affects their plan as we look at the visualization towards the end of the video. So make sure you stay tuned towards the end. But next, let's delve into their expenses. Right now, their true living expenses amount to around $5,000 a month. And this figure is calculated by taking their monthly salary, subtracting out their savings, their taxes, their mortgage, their non-discretionary travel expense, of course, and other non-discretionary payments to determine what's left. This remaining amount right here is what they spend. For our financial plans, we project this $5,000 factoring in an inflation rate of 3.75% over their lifetimes. So yes, I understand taxes, savings, and some expenses do go away in retirement, but this generally will stay the same and go at that rate of inflation. When it comes to investment returns, we've taken a moderate growth approach with a 7% growth rate. Uh, what we're gonna do here is have the right mix of stocks and conservative investments because we need this money to last for another 30 to 40 years plus, but we also wanna make sure we have the right amount of money in conservative investments to generate that sustainable and healthy income for them. Remember, if they move to part-time before Social Security and we need to generate income, we need the right portfolio allocation to do that. The last thing we want to do is have to sell from stocks in the event that they move to part-time or retire during a bear market. But let's see how this all plays out for them. Now here is Jerry and Amy's financial plan and what it looks like visually. What you're looking at here is the event that an early retirement takes place, cold turkey in their late 50s. And they're going to spend the same $5,000 a month after adjusting for inflation throughout their lifetimes. Now, as you can see, each one of these bars is a year of their lives. So next year, they will be age 51 and 48, and their investable assets are a little over $1.1 million if we assume that 7% growth rate. Now, you can see that their overall investments continue to grow because they are diligent savers. But despite that, as you can see, once they reach that retirement date in eight years and they no longer have any income, the chart starts to change trajectory here. And the reason is, is because they are going to have to start withdrawing a good amount of money to meet those expenses. You can see right here that their income completely stops. Some of their expenses go down, of course, but we need about $220,000 in withdrawals to cover their expected expenses. That's around an 11% withdrawal of their total assets, which is really not that sustainable for their financial plan. Now, if we scroll back up to this blue chart, you can see why it's heading downward. So if we look at how long the blue bars go, they run out of money at around age 79. 
Now, for some of you watching this, you might be looking at that and be like, that's a very long time. Or you could be like, that's completely way too short for us, depending on longevity in your family or how healthy you are today. But looking at their assets, things don't exactly look as they would really want to. And it did not give Jerry and Amy that level 10 confidence of being able to completely retire in eight years. Of course, unless they're willing to substantially cut back on spending and travel, which was not really on the table for them. But stay with me as I show you a few of the tweaks that we pulled that could help them get closer to that goal of early retirement and not having to wait till age 65 or 70 to stop working. So you're now looking at their financial plan with a few important tweaks here. The first tweak, and I will toggle this on, is that we brought up the idea of what if instead of an immediate retirement in their late 50s, we decide to shift to part-time work for both of them until each one of them can begin collecting social security. In the meantime, we can shift some of their savings towards that bridge account, that taxable bridge account, because we need to create a bucket of money for them to live off during those years to supplement their income. And you can see how this makes a big difference in their plan. Those green bars that you're looking at right there show the effect of these changes to their nest egg due to these tweaks. And because they gave their investments more room to grow and they end up putting a lot less stress on their portfolio because the amount they need to withdraw, uh, it's much, much lower than it would at a complete age 58 retirement, things look a lot healthier. And if we look at their cash flow, they'll have a total of expense number of around $207,000. Their income drops in half because they move to that part-time work and that will leave a need for around $33,000 or so from the portfolio to supplement their income. Now that's much healthier and only around 2% of their total portfolio. And once they both completely retire from part-time work, they both are starting to collect social security and they're going to start withdrawing around 4% of their portfolio after that. And that actually coincides perfectly with their last year of mortgage payments. So the plan looked really good from that standpoint. Now this was the first iteration of the plan and the value of this is that we can continue to update this and change things as life inevitably changes. You work extremely hard for decades and you wanna make sure you do retirement right. And that means tying up any loose ends and making sure we're fully prepared to make this big and awesome decision. Again, this is Matt. I'm a certified financial planner and advisor with one of your advisors. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any scenarios you want to see, my firm has been helping retirees over two decades now. So there's a lot of great case studies that we can go through. Nonetheless, thank you for watching and I will catch you guys on the next one.